Hi, I'm Sherry. Welcome to Canterbury Cottage. Today, I am doing something that I have never done before. A surprise living room makeover. My son's girlfriend, Amaya, moved into her first home about a year ago and has been asking for my decorating help. Well, when she moved in, she loved farmhouse style and painted every room gray and bought a big, beautiful gray sectional sofa. Well, now, like so many of us, she is tired of the farmhouse look and wants something more modern boho. So when she mentioned that she was going to be gone for a couple days this past week, I decided it would be the perfect time to make over her living room. So we met and talked about what she wanted. She gave me the house key. I had $300 and three days. So as soon as she left town, I got started. As you enter the front door, there's a large closet to the right and then a very blank wall. Amaya would like to have a TV mounted to this wall. On the wall opposite the front door is a sofa table with some cute decorative items indicative of her modern boho style. Next to that is a large opening to the eat-in kitchen. To the left of the front door is a comfy gray sectional, a large floor lamp in the corner, and a rattan and wicker coffee table. And to the right of the sectional is a wood serving cart. The only source of light is the ceiling fan, which Amaya specifically asked that I replace. The walls had recently been painted gray, so rather than repainting everything, I decided to create an accent wall where the TV would be. I chose Dark Kettle Black by Valspar. It's a very soft black and it covered beautifully in just two coats. I absolutely loved this color. In fact, I loved it so much that I called Amaya to see if I could convince her to let me paint some other things black. She said no on the closet doors, but did agree to let me paint the wood posts around her basement stairs. Now I just need to convince her to let me paint the handrails too. While I was painting, I decided to create some wall art for that large bare wall behind the sofa. My father-in-law saved these large canvases from the curb a while back, and I thought they would be perfect for some modern art. First, I spray painted them with Zinsser Primer. When the primer was dry, I used a pencil to draw on a random design. With the canvases pushed together, I continued the pattern from one canvas to the next. Once I was happy with my design, I began filling in the shapes just using craft acrylic paint. I chose colors that I was going to use throughout the room black, white, gray, and rust. It took two coats to get full coverage. I made sure to paint the sides of the canvases too. An easy way to hang canvases is to draw a level line where you want the canvases to go and hammer in two nails several inches apart. Then just slip the wood frame over the nails. I'm no artist, but I think these turned out pretty good for free artwork. To the right of the sofa was a pretty mid-century modern serving cart that was just blending in with all of the other woodwork. So to freshen it up and to help it stand out, I decided to paint all of the trim with that same pretty black paint that I had used on the wood posts. 
I think using a little accent paint makes the remaining natural wood look even better. I styled the area above the serving cart with two framed prints that I picked up at Goodwill and the mirror from Amaya's sofa table. I filled the cart with things that I found from around her house and a few things from my stash at home. I also found an old wicker hanging basket in my stash that I had thrifted years ago. I cut a piece of styrofoam and glued it into the bottom of the basket, and then I cut apart some greenery and stuck the stems into the styrofoam. Because you wouldn't be able to see it, I didn't bother covering the styrofoam with Spanish moss. It's very lightweight, so to hang it, I just screwed a small cup hook into the ceiling. I picked up this wood shelf at Goodwill for $3.99. I think perhaps it was meant to stand upright, but I was going to use it horizontally as a TV console. I sanded it smooth using my Orbital Sander and 220 grit sandpaper. Then I used an old rag to apply some stain. I chose golden oak because I felt that was the color that was closest to the existing wood that was already in her home. To attach the console to the wall, I screwed two sturdy shelf brackets into the studs of the wall and then screwed the console into the brackets. Once I add baskets to the openings, you won't be able to see the brackets at all. To balance all of the wood in the basement stairwell, I decided to add even more wood to this black accent wall. I bought 10 8 foot long furring strips at Lowe's for $1.98 each. The wood was pretty rough. So I sanded them first with 120 grit sandpaper, and then I went over it again with 220 grit sandpaper. It was pretty chilly outside, so I brought the slats inside to stain them. I used the same golden oak stain that I had used on the TV console. To install the wood strips, I lined up the first one with the edge of the wall and attached it with my nail gun. I then used a small block of wood as my spacer before installing the second strip. As I continued to add strips, I realized that I needed to attach the TV bracket to the studs so that I could work the wood slats around it. I wish I had bought a few more furring strips because I would have liked to have gone farther across the wall. To fill the openings in the TV console and to hide the cords and the router, I bought some inexpensive collapsible boxes from Dollar Tree. I also bought two placemats at Goodwill for $1.99. I cut each of the placemats in half. I hot glued the bound edge of the placemat along the top edge of the collapsible box. I also hot glued the mat to the sides and along the bottom of the box. I trimmed off the extra mat, leaving about a half an inch, which I folded over and hot glued to the bottom of the box. My placemats are wider than my collapsible boxes, but once I put them into the TV console openings, you won't be able to tell. A few weeks ago, a sweet friend gave me two floating shelves that she wasn't using anymore, and I thought they would add extra interest to this black accent wall. To make sure that my shelves were level, I used a level on the wall and drew a straight line. Then I measured the distance between the two holes for the brackets and marked those on my straight line. To be able to hang the shelves where I wanted them, I was not able to screw into studs this time, so instead I drilled holes and inserted anchors to secure my screws and brackets. The shelves were pretty scratched up, so I went over both of them with a coat of the same black paint that I used on the wall. 
I staged the shelves with two thrifted frames that only cost $5. I also used some of Amaya's vases and a few things from my stash, like these vintage rusty red books. There was still a bit of bare wall on the right side of the TV below the floating shelf, and so you know me, I had to put something there. So I attached two wall hooks that I thrifted for 99 cents each, and then found some glass vases in my stash to hang on each hook. Technically, there was nothing wrong with the living room curtains, but I did not like the combination of the rod pocket shears with the grommet-topped drapes. To eliminate the ruffle created by extra fabric at the top of the shears, I hung them upside down, running the rod through the hem pocket. My Goodwill recently received a large shipment of Target merchandise, I couldn't believe my luck when I spotted these four pale orange curtain panels in the size that I needed. Because her white curtains were nice, I moved them to her kitchen window. You know I think every room needs a clock, and I decided to make a very special one for Amaya. Using a thrifted gold alarm clock, I took off the back the bells, and the feet, and then I removed the inner parts. I carefully removed the hands from the clock face, keeping the parts in order for reassembly. I printed out a picture of Amaya's cat, Cleo, in a size to fit the clock face. Using an X-Acto knife, I cut a small hole in the center and then I applied glue stick to the back of the picture and then adhered it over the existing clock face. I reattached the clock hands in the correct order and then I reassembled the clock. Even if the clock didn't work, I still think that it makes a cute picture frame. I wanted to give her a little footstool, and I found this bright yellow one for $3 at Goodwill, so I thought perhaps I could cover it with sisal rope. I thought you might be able to see the bright yellow showing through the rope, so I decided to cut it off. I marked the center spot on the top of the ottoman, but I should have done a better job because I was a little off. I glued the end of the sisal rope to my center mark and then I began wrapping the rope around itself and hot gluing it in place. Covering the top of the ottoman was pretty tedious because you have to use a lot of hot glue and you have to hold the rope in place until the glue dries before you move on. But once you get to the sides, it goes much faster. I cut the top off of the yellow vinyl cover to put on the bottom of my ottoman, and I used spray adhesive to hold it in place. Once the rope was to the bottom edge of the ottoman, I went around it a couple more times to cover the edge of the yellow vinyl and make sure that it stayed in place. I used almost 200 feet of sisal rope, which cost me about $12, plus the $3 for the ottoman, bringing this to a total of $15. When you walk in the door, the first thing that you see is this sofa table. I thought she needed something more substantial, perhaps something with closed storage, and I found this drop leaf secretary for $35. She had a large rectangular mirror that she wasn't using, and so I decided to hang it above the secretary using the French cleat that was attached to the back of the mirror. I styled the top of the desk with this thrifted concrete planter and things that she already owned. A couple of weeks ago, I rescued a blue chair that my neighbor put out for the trash. At the time, I didn't know what I would do with it, but after a couple coats of black matte spray paint, 
I thought it was the perfect addition to the secretary desk. I thrifted a boho mirror and a round metal bowl for a few dollars each to hang above the chair. I didn't have my goo gone with me, but luckily Dawn dish soap easily removed the sticker residue left behind on the mirror. Amaya's gray sofa was lovely, but it lacked contrast. All of her throw blankets were gray, and all of her pillows were black. So I purchased two orange velvet pillow covers from Amazon for $16 and an orange throw blanket for $17. I also thrifted two placemats for $1.99, and I made orange tassels using yarn from the Dollar Tree. I pinned the tassels in the corner and then I pinned the placemats together with the pretty sides showing outward. I stitched up three sides, stuffed the pillow, stitched up the fourth side. Then I hot glued the four corners just to further stabilize the tassels. Even though Amaya is not a fan of cottage style, I still managed to get some birds into her room. Amaya had two main requests for this makeover. One was to create a place for her TV, and two, get rid of the ceiling fan. Originally, I was going to DIY a light fixture, but then I saw this Target light at Goodwill for only $32, and I knew she would love it. While I was waiting on her to get home from the airport, I made a quick trip to Dollar Tree and picked up some colorful succulents to add to the terrarium on the coffee table. I also picked up a ceramic bird. And to add interest to the front of the secretary desk, I brought over an old purse and scarf of mine to hang from the knob. Because I did pull several things from my own personal stash, it's hard to know the exact amount I spent on this makeover. But I am confident that I stayed well under my $300 budget. I couldn't wait to see what Amai would think. I sure hope she loved it as much as I did. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sherry. Sherry. <laughs> This is not the house I left. Look at that. It's insane. What? I know. I'm never getting off the couch now. Can I move in? Yeah. <laughs> I love this. This is insane. Like, I'm never getting off the couch now. Can I move in? Yeah. <laughs> I love this. You did an amazing job. Two days. It with you, so. <laughs> no, it looks perfect. Look at this. I know. It's perfect. This is so cozy. I'm never leaving that spot. Unreal. Are you blown away? I'm beyond blown away.
Well, how did I do? Modern boho is not my style, and I have to be honest that I was concerned about decorating a room in something other than my traditional cottage style. But I think she liked it. Let me know if you liked it too. Well, thank you so very much for watching, and I hope to see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye for now. If you enjoyed this room makeover, here are a couple others that you might just like.